For the past 26 years, the International Diabetes Federation and the World Health Organization has recognized November 14th as World Diabetes Day. This day is very important that we bring awareness to all of the issues that are, are affecting people living with diabetes. And I'm very pleased to share with you that World Diabetes Day 2017 is about women and diabetes. Sometimes we don't actually think about the gender differences when diabetes is discussed. And I believe that we have an opportunity by using this day to really have a call to action for women living with diabetes. Right now, approximately 199 million women in the world live with, with diabetes, and this is projected to rise to 313 million by the year 2040. And we understand that diabetes is the ninth leading cause of death in women. Specific challenges that are faced by women who live with diabetes, or perhaps even we could suggest at risk of diabetes, are those that include pregnancy. We know that women after menopause with diabetes have a higher rate of heart disease than their male counterparts. There seems to be some protection prior to menopause, but after that, they have a significant five-fold increased risk of heart disease. And also, we can also appreciate that women are often the caregivers. They're the individuals who set the standards. They're responsible for the care for their families. And so women are the gatekeepers to better health, not only for themselves, but for all, they care, for all of those that they care for. Are there inequalities between men and women living with diabetes? Well, certainly all women with diabetes require affordable and equal access to health care to better manage their disease and improve their health outcomes. And we understand that in some areas of the world that that standard isn't necessarily achieved. And I think that raising on a day like today, November 14th, World Diabetes Day, the fact that women actually have more significant struggles we need to advocate with, in whatever country we live to make sure that women are being serviced for their needs specific to diabetes in an equal fashion to the male counterparts. Besides heart disease for women living with diabetes as a big call out in terms of the management, knowing that women with type 2 diabetes are 10 times more likely to have a coronary artery event than their male counterpart. Let's talk about pregnancy. Women are the, the gateway to better health of the next future, and they are entrusted with the ability to bring life. We recognize there are multiple issues that happen for women with diabetes. First of all, they have a more difficult time conceiving. We also recognize that one in seven pregnancies today is affected by gestational diabetes. And if you live with type 1 or type 2 diabetes, there are things that you must take care of prior to conceiving a child. And those are standards in terms of glycemic control and self-care that you really need to be engaged in your health care. So let's back this up. Type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes established prior to pregnancy. We know that you need to have access to good health care. You need to set and achieve glycemic targets prior to conception. And we also understand that the targets for glycemic control throughout pregnancy are very stringent to ensure the best health outcome for mom and baby. That's when we know about diabetes. When we don't know about diabetes in the area of, of gestational diabetes, there are worldwide standards about screening. Some countries have different um, rules at, or sorry guidelines around when to screen and how frequently to screen and how to screen. But at the end of the day, knowing that there is such a high incidence of gestational diabetes and rising, likely related to our higher incidence of obesity, the call to action for pregnancy in women without diabetes is to ensure adequate screening is done. Once we've screened for diabetes and we've detected it, of course, good self-care, good education, good medical management, 
close monitoring to ensure the best outcome for the baby. But again, specific to gestational diabetes, women who are currently affected by gestational diabetes have the opportunity to access care. And then once they deliver, that's where the real focus needs to change. A lot of women post gestational, so after giving birth, are lost in the system. They are never screened adequately at six weeks to make sure that they don't in fact actually now have diabetes. And they go on and they live their life knowing that these are the individuals that have a one in two chance of going on to get diabetes later. So because we are not adequately screening them and, and treating them post-pregnancy, post some of these are the people that show up pregnant with undiagnosed type two diabetes past the first trimester when all of the damage in terms of uh, a fetal anomalies may have occurred. We have recognized for decades that having gestational diabetes increases the risk of developing type 2 diabetes later in life. I think we need to make sure that women who have had gestational diabetes have been properly informed of this risk. And like anyone else who's in a pre-diabetes state or at high risk of diabetes, we encourage a healthy lifestyle, healthy behavioral lifestyle. So following a adequate diet, healthy eating, uh, getting physical activity, and trying to reduce stress levels. But I would also suggest that someone who has gestational diabetes falls in, has had previous gestational diabetes, falls into the high risk category for more frequent screening. So empowering the person that has gestational diabetes through education to know that they need to be screened, they can advocate for their own screening to ensure that they don't live with undiagnosed type 2 diabetes, knowing full well that that's when the complications will occur. The message I have for women with or without diabetes is that you need to take care of yourself. So it's very important that if you live with diabetes that you get the proper education and self-care support that you need to adequately manage your disease. Women are often too busy being the caregiver. They're often the person mostly responsible for uh, maintaining a healthy household and if you live with diabetes then you should make sure that you take time when you're taking care of others to take care of yourself. We know that you are held to higher standards because you are the woman who is promoting the healthy lifestyle in their home and sometimes there are challenges that you face to be able to do that and know that you are doing the best job that you can possibly do but you are no help to your family or to anyone around you if you live with diabetes and that you do not take proper care of yourself. Recognizing that women access care less than men, recognizing that women have a higher rate of heart disease, recognizing that women are also at higher risk of complications post-pregnancy, it's really vital that women understand what diabetes is, how it can affect their body what steps they can take to be able to ensure they have the best possible outcomes both in and outside of pregnancy and that you are leading the next generation to a healthy lifestyle setting a good example providing healthy behavioral lifestyle in your home and doing the best that you possibly can to promote health in your children and in the rest of your family If you're a healthcare professional who manages individuals living with diabetes, I hope that World Diabetes Day 2017 is a call to action for you. I hope that you recognize that while we often talk about diabetes in the broad population, that for all of the women that you care for in your practice, that there are very specific challenges and that we should remember to explore and address and help them face these challenges to ensure the best quality and quantity of life for women living with diabetes.